Fluffy Cat is under the desk. Chip is laying in the curtain by the window. We'll see how long they put up with me being in here with the door closed, because this is the last Wednesday before school starts. The kiddo is still out here. Next week, I'll be able to have the door open, and the cats can come and go as they want, and I'm sure they'll ignore me completely. Right? Right? So, my big thing last week was finishing this wasn't hard, it went together well, it's just my brain influenced by my uterus was saying I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna. So when it came time to all I had to do was sew the buttons and I use this thing to sew button holes. This contraption, you put it on the sewing machine, you put a template in, it makes the button holes perfect size every time. And it doesn't usually mess up. Sometimes the threads can get tangled underneath. Because usually I'm making the buttonholes near the very end and there's a lot of lint in the machine that should have been cleaned out so it can get more prone to tangling when it's linty. But, so it was going to be easy and I have this... This presser foot, which I put on and it'll hold a button in place and you can zigzag a button in... on with the sewing machine, so it's like there's no hand sewing left at all. So it's easy and fast, but I just didn't want to do it. It was to the point where I started procrastinating by sewing other things. Doll clothes. Now, I will say the reason, one of the, part of the reason I procrastinated, there goes Chip, the buttons by sewing doll clothes, is the bobbin was almost out of thread, and I didn't want to deal with changing the bobbin replacing the bobbin, refilling the bobbin with this big thing, the sewing the buttonholer foot was on my machine. So I thought, well, I'll just sew some doll clothes and use up the rest of that, and then I'll refill that, and then I'll have plenty of bobbin thread. Chip? I'll have plenty of bobbin thread left to sew the buttonholes after I get the doll clothes sewn. Oh, now Flu's going to the door. So the thread was black, so I decided I would sew black cloth, at least black heavy cloth. The first thing I wanted to do is some of the Susan cloth was a wool plaid tartan, whatever you call it. I think it's all wool. It might be a wool blend. But what I absolutely wanted to make out of it was a circle skirt for 60 centimeter doll size. And I know, I know I need to restring her still, but I have not been brave enough or had a good enough memory to do it. So she is super floppy. But the waistband is a little large for her. Since it's wool and it's all bias, I managed to shrink it out a little bit using a lot of steam and water from the iron. And I have a lapped zipper on the side. This is one of those zippers that I think one of the Susan sent. I don't think it's a Bailey zipper. I think it's one of those. Yeah, it's one of those Susan zippers because of the metric. So I know it came from Canada. And there's just a snap up there. So, and this turned out as I wanted it to. It's relatively quick. I surged the hem and just rolled it up as I was stitching it, so it's not the best circle skirt hem, but it's not too distorted, so that's fine. So that used most of the piece of the wool. But there was a little bit left, I thought, well, is there enough to make a circle skirt for a six scale doll? And there was, and I did. And the last few years when it's been time to go back to school, and I'm feeling like sewing stuff for the kiddo, I have been looking at the online pre predicted fall fashion trends for, you know, last year fall 2017, this year fall 2018, and I was happy to see that one of the big trends that a lot of the different sites agreed on is plaid, and the kind of the 80s in general, which a lot of people now remember that 
yes, plaid flannel was big in the 90s for grunge, or the plaid, the clueless type plaids, but in the 80s, plaid was... I loved plaids in the 80s. And also loud prints, and 80 silhouettes, and... Mixing it all together, mixing mixing prints, mixing loud prints, and mixing plaza the prints, which of course this is making me happy. It's one of those things that I know my silhouettes aren't going to be in fashion, but the the ideas, it's like I've worn tights most of my life, so my legs have come in and out of fashion as tights have come in and out of fashion, so the thing with plaids and mixing prints, I'm all for that. So I sewed the skirt and then I used one of my patterns that I shared a while ago for the um, dolman sleeve, sort of bat wing sleeve shirt for curvy dolls. And this is not a curvy doll, but I still... Another fall trend was, I think one of the slides called it protective layers. It's like dressing like you're gonna be warm. So that's my protective layers and plaid and loud prints and pr mixing and I will say, I've had these, I got these old Blight, Blight, these shoes were Blight ages ago, and I'm so glad they fit her flat Project MC squared feet, because it is the perfect plaid to mix with the skirt plaid. And there's cat hair everywhere. So, this I just think is amusing. I don't know if I would have done this combination without being prompted by the fall fashion prediction sites, but you know I do love to mix prints. And I just... There is a snap at the waist and some velcro hook and loop tape below it on the back. Like, the, the skirt on the 60 centimeter doll I cut as two half circles, and then I cut out the waist and sewed them together. This one I just cut out as a full circle, then cut up the back and put on the velcro, and there is a bias waistband on this too. And yes, this doll is a little smaller than regular Barbie size, but that's part of the big slouchy layers. And then I had another idea to sew something. If you've seen the um, 2018 convention Barbies, they have the articulated collectible curvy body, which is that one that I'm a little irritated by because it's not shaped like a curvy body, it's shaped like the Playline Wonder Woman body, just wider. But the outfits that came with it, it's like four pieces mix and match, like sort of a big bow crop top and a black sparkly turtleneck bodysuit and a long skirt and a shorter gray skirt. And I was looking at this and I thought, black or color doesn't matter because, you know, you're sewing. Bodysuit for curvy, long sleeved turtleneck. You know, I shared that pattern last year. Of course, the one, the convention dolls, it's not, it's constructed completely differently. My pattern has raglan sleeves and a front seam, and the convention dolls outfit didn't. Still, I happen to still have a little bit of an old pair of tights that I have been using to make doll clothes mostly doll tights for years. And so I sew that into this, a curvy sized, black, sparkly, turtleneck, long sleeve, bodysuit. And then just to amuse me more, um, I didn't have cloth, like I have not gotten a good look at the dolls, the convention dolls, so I don't know what the bodysuit's made out of and how its sparkles are, but the um, Honestly, from what I've seen of the pictures, the cloth used in the skirt looks like this knit from the tights, too. But I didn't have any of that in gray, so I just I had this sort of sports jersey. And I just used a straight edge and a... Um, I'm blanking out on what... These things are called the rolling cutting things. Rotary cutter, yeah, that's it. I used a rotary cutter and a straight edge to just cut out a long triangle of this cloth. Then I used my gathering foot to gather it slightly, and then I stretched out this piece of elastic and stitched it to it, so it gathered up nicely. So this is my um, 
I won't call it mockery. This is my homage to the 2018 Convention Dolls alternate outfit. I mean, I will so joke stuff like this when I'm trying to avoid finishing things. And in the process of still trying to avoid finishing things, I pulled out this envelope, which is where I have all my ideas for patterns I want to share. And I took out... Sorry, I have so much cat hair everywhere right now, my nose especially. So I'm trying, I'm trying to cut out the parts where I'm just wiping the cat hair off of my nose. Because <laughs> it's still shedding season. So anyway, I took out this pattern that I'd sketched up. I made a skirt for a doll and before I sewed it, I went ahead and just scribbled the outlines of the pieces I cut out on the paper. And so I scanned these and started tracing around them. And um, it took me a while to get it right. Each one of these is perfectly fine for my dolls. And I'm sure other people wouldn't have a problem with them. But they're all a little off. Either the side seam was in weird places, which that took me a few to get worked out, or the back dart was in weird places. So I'd sew it and then I'd go back to my illustration program and nudge things around how much I thought they should be. And then I got to the point where stuff was more or less in the right place, but one change I'd made made like the front too long and I didn't catch that until I was like two more iterations out and again it would have been fine for my own pattern stuff I sew for my own dolls for my own patterns that I use a lot of times don't quite line up right and I just make a mental note to work around it but if I'm making a pattern to share I don't want to put you through my tortured process so I eventually got everything right, and then I haven't taken a picture of it yet because I wanted to make another bodysuit to wear with it. Because part of the idea of making this low waist skirt was that it was something that would fit over the bodysuit. Because the bodysuit can be kind of hard. If your knits are really thick, it can be kind of hard to put something over it without it making it look like, like her waist is up here. <laughs> So this was my final iteration of the low rise curvy size A line skirt. And I will get get it photographed properly and get it posted on Flickr soon. Maybe by the time this video is up, maybe not. If it is, whenever it's up, I will add the link below. So I did do a little more last week than I did before, so I'm not going to pull out a box and go through it. That's that's like the last resort kind of thing. Hopefully I will get back in the swing of doing things because my brain's not going to be resisting finishing something. And I think it turned out okay. I think it turned out fine. It's just I'm finally at the point where sewing where I understand why people complain about sewing with quilting cottons because it doesn't quite feel right. It just feels a little bit too heavy. But I try not to let my despair bring me down too much. It did bring me down. So that's where I am this week. And I have another, I already know what the next pattern I want to share is. And it's actually only one piece that you're going to repeat. like six or eight times but it's a weird piece and again I've been using it in my own stuff for Blythe size so I need to make it bigger and I need to make it actually work not so you have to fudge everything like I do so hopefully I'll have that out soon too again like I said next week is back to school so next Wednesday I'll be able to stop in the thrift store oh we did go into Walmart today and I saw the two of the Mario themed Barbie out fits finally. I saw the one with the Mario t-shirt with the skirt. I'm, 
I just didn't quite think either was worth five dollars, but that's me being picky because I sew. So I also, the kiddo was with me and we actually had fun with this. They had the, the dress with the all over character print. It has an beer waist, so there's a seam across it. And the one I was almost leaning toward getting had most of Princess Peach above the seam and then like the hem of her dress below the seam, so it's like almost a complete Princess Peach there, which that was nice. Another one had Princess Peach's body below the neckline, so it kind of haha -ha looked like Princess Peach's head would be whoever said it was above it. The one the kiddo was trying to talk me into buying was um, Princess Peach's body was below the waist seam. And at first that's all I noticed was, oh, they cut off her head. But then we noticed that right above the seam, right where her head would be, was Luigi's head. <laughs> he He's really trying to talk me into buying that, but I didn't. He did buy an action figure today. He's he's really gotten into Half Life lately. His dad his dad got Half Life either really cheap or really free lately, so he's been playing it. And the kiddo's been watching him play it. And then the kiddo gets Half Life stuff for Gary's mod, so he watches his dad play stuff and he has advice. And of course he he get, he misses the things that his dad or he sees the things his dad misses. So at one point his dad said, "Well." <laughs> He was really frustrated and it got to the point, it's like, well, if you think you can do it, do it. And, and the kiddo sat down and did it. And the husband's like, oh, maybe this is how I can get through the hard parts is just make the kid do them. But yesterday they discovered, the kiddo discovered the mod, the Sven mod that kind of creates half-life, in quotes, for two players. So he's waiting for his father to get home so he can play that. But in the meantime, since it's his last our last errands day before back to school, we stopped in Target. Well, we stopped in Kohl's and got some Roblox t-shirts, and we stopped in Target, and he picked out his lunchbox. It's another cat-themed lunchbox lunch bag this year. And then we went to GameStop just to see what they had, and, and we had, actually, the guy at that store is very nice and told us that there was one Half-Life thing left at the other store. So we went there, and so now the kiddo has a Half-Life, roughly a scale, Gordon Freeman action for the year. And I said, hey, you could have gotten that peach with a Luigi head dress for him. And he laughed, but he might be thinking about it. So if that happens, I'll let you know. And that's it for this week. I said a little more productive, a little, a little more hopeful that I will be able to be productive in the future. And I need to get this photographed so I can share it properly with you, so if you want to make a skirt. I actually, I don't know how many pieces I have made of patterns of Kirby size stuff. I know I have this jumpsuit, this bodysuit, and this skirt, and then there's that high-low rise shirt, and then there's the tank dress, which you can also cut off to make a tank top. So, I uh, might be able to create a decent little wardrobe for Kirby from my patterns, if you want to. Uh, I am expecting, I, have got, I got emails from two very nice people yesterday. I'm going to be getting some boxes of doll things to, um, supposed to arrive tomorrow. So there might be another little box opening video between this week and next week. So of course, you'll know when it happens because they'll put it up on YouTube. And I am definitely starting to ramble now. Thanks for watching.